We have the Denver Broncos versus the New York Jets. I'm going to go ahead and hit you with my uh, fantasy football projected stats via RoccoBot. If you're not familiar with RoccoBot, check out YouTube dot com slash the underdog you'll know what it's about but uh denver uh driscoll don't like him uh melvin gordon i think he's start worthy this week although i don't like him that much philip Lindsay is practicing again although i tend to think he's not going to play that's just my gut uh, but even so i don't love the projection on him jerry judy i think does well uh assuming he can play i know he was questionable last week i think he escaped this week uh, with injuries tim patrick although i don't have as a start i think he should be on your radar got in the end zone last week not a ton of receiving yards but again he's kind of that secondary receiver there KJ Hamler should also be on your radar at this point out of the slot but not start worthy for me this week Noah Fant though is a start I love him in this matchup for the Jets they're reeling I look today you know Bell is obviously continues to be out I stay away from all the running backs uh, Crowder has been out with a hamstring it's good that he wasn't put on IR but you got to watch that closely short week of rest I have a hard time believing he's going to get in there but again pay attention if Crowder plays I think he's a start I do have a computer grade to start Chris Herndon but I am personally staying the heck away from Herndon and Darnold I don't think you can start him take it away David what do you think uh, I'll start with the second to last name you mentioned because he was the last jet I was holding on to holding out hope for Chris Herndon, it's time to let go, guys. Nobody on this Jets team, maybe Le'Veon Bell, that's about it. Nobody deserves to be rostered in a 12-team, 14, 16 league. Just don't do it. It's not worth it. You're never putting these guys into your lineup and feeling confident about it. Just put a big black Sharpie across the Jets and forget they exist. As for the Broncos, I actually kind of like Driscoll this week Mm. a little bit if he starts – uh, he yeah. was benched against Tampa Bay, which is not great. But again, Tampa's been a really good defense, especially against the quarterback. They've been a top five for fantasy points allowed. In Driscoll, it's about the running. Last year, in his three starts with Detroit, he he was a top 13 quarterback in all three of his starts. He finished as weekly QB 12, QB 5, and QB 13, just based off his ability to run the ball. I'm talking about the Jets, this is about as good as a matchup as, as they can get two QB leagues, super flex leagues. If you're desperate, I think Driscoll's probably got one one good start in him for you. Yeah, if you're talking about, you know, especially a plug-in play or something like that, it, we'll, we'll get to it in the Chicago segment, but Nick Foles to me is that guy um, because he's owned in so few leagues at this point. I know in super flex, people might have... Uh, uh, you know, picked him up just to stash him on a roster. But uh, we'll get to him in the Chicago segment. You know, Driscoll, I don't mind him. And it's just Denver, man, two two years in a row, they're kind of getting ravaged by injuries. You hate to see Sutton go down. But the good news is, look, Denver was never going to, to compete for Super Bowl this year anyway. You know, you lose a few more games than you would with Locke going down too. You get a little bit of better draft position. And Judy has to grow up in a hurry with him basically drawing the coverage, uh, all the defensive back, you know, number one coverages and everything. Tim Patrick's better than you think he is. Um, and I actually like Philip Lindsay a little bit more. I think both of these teams right now, although this game, again, I'm not looking forward to it. I don't mean any disrespect to the fan bases out there. But both teams are just hurt by injuries. The Jets are a team I was a little bit higher on, um, and I was actually taking the over on their because they had a really low win pro, uh, total projection. But the injuries got them. Uh, they're plagued, and the wheels seem to be call, uh, falling off a little bit there. When Le'Veon Bell... And a little James, bit? A little bit, yeah, I know. <laughs> Good call. When Le'Veon Bell and Jamison Crowder come back, they'll be like one of these teams that will cover the spread. Because the spread is just going to be like, you know, Jets minus 10, Jets minus 11 all season long. When those guys come back, if you're a gambler, I think they'll have some value. But what really drives me crazy for the Jets is, you know, the exit is a talent there because they can't get along with the coaching staff. That's a big red flag to me. I see the same thing in Detroit. I hate what Matt Patricia is doing there, kicking out all pro uh, defenders and everything. You're supposed to be, you know, a, a, a defensive minded team, Greg Williams and all that stuff. You can't get along with your star players. It's, hey man, we're, we're in the millennial and the, the Gen Y, the Gen Z, all that stuff age. You got to get along with your players. You can coach them hard, but you got to be able to get through to these guys. I just, I think the wheels are coming off. I think that coaching staff gets replaced in the, with the New York Jets, but they do have talent. The big question is, do they lose enough games to get Lawrence and replace Darnold? That's going to be a storyline, but that's going to be a storyline months down the road. Let me hit you with the line, David, here in this game. Bavada has Denver minus three versus New York Jets Thursday night football. Who you got? Tell you this, I'm not picking the Jets the rest of the year for <laughs> for anything. I don't care what it is, what the spread is. I'm not picking them. Let me say one more thing, though, about Sam Darnold, because you talked about the Trevor Lawrence thing. 
go buy him in Dynasty, guys. He's a good quarterback. Yeah. What I think it, the analogy is for me, he's like a sunflower who was planted in the middle of a New York sidewalk. Like, he's got no chance. He's He could be great. But he's got no foundation to grow in. He's he's living in the alleyways and the cracks of the of the pavement. So go get this guy. If they do replace him with Lawrence, even better. He's gonna be a starting quarterback somewhere in this league. I think he's got a bright future. We see the wow plays every week uh, on film. Whether it was I believe two two weeks in a row to Berrios where he just made a mm. dime of a touchdown throw. So I think Sam Darnold. The value is is as low, and the cost is as low as it's ever going to be for this guy. You know, and I got to say, when the Jets clean clean house, because there's no way that they're not cleaning house this year. There's a there's a coordinator out there who I was shocked didn't get more head coaching um, interviews last year based on what he did in the back half of the season. This year, three and zero Tennessee Titans, Arthur Smith, offensive coordinator. He will be a head coach sooner rather than later. Um, if, if a guy like him who commits to the run goes to the Jets, he can breathe new life uh, into Sam Darnold. I don't think Le'Veon Bell is necessarily the answer there at running back, but maybe he can be. Maybe maybe it's the scheme. So, you know, a replace in the coaching staff could breathe new life into Darnold. I don't, I'm, not a, I'm not a seller on him as an NFL starter either, but the Jets just haven't done very well with him as an organization. They paired him with the defensive-minded Todd Bowles to start with. Then you get Adam Gase, who always has trouble. His whole history, he has trouble getting along with people. Um, it's a tough draw. I don't think that the cupboard is completely bare, but it's about there. Jeez. Anyway, 